THE VOYAGE WEST. In a broken voice he exclaimed, My dear child, your leg is broken all to pieces. The news soon spread along the train, and a halt was called. A surgeon was found, and the limb set. Then we pushed on the same night to Laramie, where we arrived soon after dark. This accident confined me to the wagon the remainder of the long journey. After Laramie, we entered the great American desert, which was hard on the teams. Sickness became common. Father and the boys were all sick, and we were dependent on for a driver on the Dutch doctor who set my leg. He offered his services and was employed, but though an excellent surgeon, he knew little about driving oxen. Some of them often had to rise from their sick beds to wade streams and get the oxen safely across. One day, four buffalo ran between our wagon and the one behind. Though feeble, father seized his gun and gave chase to them. This imprudent act prostrated him again, and soon became apparent that his days were numbered. He was fully conscious of the fact, but could not be reconciled to the thought of leaving his large and helpless family in such precarious circumstances. The evening before his death, we crossed Green River and camped on the bank. Looking where I lay helpless, he said, Poor child, what will become of you? He said his last hour had come, and his heart was filled with anguish for his family. His wife was ill, the children small, and one likely to be crippled. They had no relatives near, and a long journey lay before them. Father was buried the next day on the banks of Green River, but next year immigrants found his bleaching bones, as the Indians had disinterred the remains. We hired a young man to drive. At Fort Bridger the stream was full of fish, and we made nets of wagon sheets to catch them. That evening, the new driver told Mother he would hunt for game if she would let him use, his, use the gun. He took it, and we never saw him again. Mother was rapidly failing under her sorrows. The nights and mornings were very cold, and she took cold for the exposure. With camp fever and a sore mouth, she fought bravely against fate for the sake of her children, but she was taken delirious soon after reaching Fort Bridger, and was bedfast. She suffered intensely. She talked of her dead husband until at last she became unconscious. Her babe was cared for by the women of the train. Those kind-hearted women would also come in at night and wash the dust from the mother's face and otherwise make her comfortable. We traveled a rough road the day she died and she moaned fearfully all the time. She lived but a few moments and her last words were, Oh Henry, if you only knew how we had suffered. The tent was set up, the corpse laid out, and next morning we took the last look at our mother's face. The grave was near the road. Willow brush was laid in the bottom and covered the body. The earth filled in. Then the train moved on.